Hey y'all, Brad Dino here, coming at you again for another Appalachian Trail community news, through hiker update, and trail information. Well, it's been a skinny minute since I was back here with an update. It took a couple weeks off. One week I was up in Vermont finishing up what Come Along and I started last year, and then uh, then I just had to take a week off to get back orientated, back into the matrix, and uh, unfortunately back to my real job. So. But in any case, I want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to Trail Angel Retread. Retread helped support me up there in Vermont. He came, uh, picked me up at the Albany Airport in New York, and he lives in New York, uh, New York State. Picked me up there, brought me to the trail, and then went back, picked up Base Camp Retread, and towed it up there uh, to Vermont, got it set up. And then uh, when I got off the trail, I was ready to get off and uh, get some uh, dry clothes on me and take a shower. He was there to feed me, keep a roof over my head, and then put me back out on the trail. So it was awesome, Retread. Thank you so much for doing that. And also a big shout out to his wife, Kathy. Uh, when I got off the trail, came back, uh, they let me stay there for the night. Kathy fed me and kept me full of good food and conversation until Retread could get me back to the airport the next day. So thanks a lot for letting Retread be a trail angel and just for your hospitality up there, it was awesome, and that made my vacation up there. So thanks a lot. Now, let's get on to what you folks came for, and that's what's going on with the Appalachian Trail. So who is out there on the trail right now? How things are going? Well, begin with when I was up in Vermont, and it is still true right now, is it is very dry out there on the trail. So even that uh, showers that come through, we had like a three-inch shower one night, and it's still, and that's a little more in the shower actually, uh, but it still didn't recharge the springs enough. So it's very dry up there. Of course, it's very hot, still very hot up there. But folks that are going on out there on the trail, we got Mishap and Amethyst. They are subo and they are through New Hampshire and into Vermont. And they say the trail difficulty has been dramatically improving after finishing Mount Musilaki and the 4,000 peaks there in the white. They also indicated that water sources have been problematic as the dry weather has continued and the heat indexes are high. And that was something, of course, that I found out while I was up there in Vermont as well. And just because you're at a, at a higher latitude does not mean that it's going to be cooler up there. Even the higher altitudes did not seem to be cool. So Lolly and Pop, they are through Le Lehigh Gap, and they'll be in New Jersey next week sometime. They say the water is sparse in that area. Hot Hands is off trail for 10 days, somewhere around Glasgow, where she got off around Glasgow for a mental reset. Now she is back on trail and has a completely new outlook on it. She's hiking with Fib since Glasgow, and they'll be walking across the Pennsylvania-New Jersey border any day now. Lazarus and Rocket Man, they have made it to Andover, Maine. Horseshoe and Super Sport, they have made it through the Triple Crown. The Don, he is north of Atkins, Virginia. Elias and Pocket Rocket, they are through the Wildcats. Last Call, he should be well into New Hampshire by now. Uh, came across uh, Last Call while I was up there uh, at the Stratton Pond Shelter. Just came through there. He, uh, We updated or he reported in a few times, but we hadn't heard from him uh, in a while. But it's good just to reconnect with him. And he took this killer picture of me getting water out of the pond down there. And yes, that pond is the water source. It's supposed to be a water source nearby, but it's not really a... The pond was a better alternative, believe it or not. But the pond looks to be very clean water as well. And hey, I'm here, didn't get sick. Resupply, he has made it to New York and he's at mile or north of mile 1375. 75. Santiago, he has made it through the presidentials and here's a shot of him up on Mount Lincoln. So that is awesome to hear, Santiago. So Lucky is on his subo, and Lucky, of course, is the proprietor down, and the owner down at the Above the Clouds Hostel down in Georgia, and uh, they're at Woody Gap, and he is on a subo hike, and I crossed paths with him there in uh, Hanover, uh, New Hampshire, just happened to be coming down the street, and there he was eating breakfast there. So it's awesome to run into him, and my understanding is he is all the way into Massachusetts now. Groceries is north of Bennington, Vermont. Doug and Donna, they have made it to Bennington, Vermont, and Dandelion is over Mount Killington in Vermont. So we're trying to see a pattern there. We got a lot, big bubble that is going through the Vermont area, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire area right now. Uh, Tennessee, he's made it to New Hampshire. 
Five Levens made it to uh, Vermont and is over Stratton Mountain. Come along. He is into Vermont and repeating the southern section of Vermont, The which when I say southern section, I mean the section there north of Killington, north of where the Long Trail Junction is. So he's going to repeat that from last year. So he can include that in his through hike, and then he'll be continuing on north. And so that is all the folks that I have reported in for the past week or so on the Appalachian Trail. I have a lot of people that have gotten off due to illnesses or injuries or their hike is just, they've just called their hike where it is. Uh, and then we've had a few summits, a lot more summits than a few, but those are the, we haven't had a tremendous amount of the folks that have been reporting in to me. Uh, and so, but I did want to report that uh, Outback, who was on the ECT and he updated us throughout his whole course, pretty much all the way from where he got on down at uh, Key West, all the way up to uh, Mount Summit and Mount Katahdin, and he's continuing on north on the ECT, and he is through New Brunswick, uh, up in Canada. And so the plan is on ending the ECT in Belle Isle, Newfoundland, by the end of September. So if you are out there on the trail and you want to be a part of our updates, then go ahead and send those in to me. You can send those down in the description section. There's uh, plenty of ways you can get in touch with me through either email or through a DM. Send those to me by Thursday or Friday and let us know how things are going on the trail, uh, not only for you, but what the conditions are out there, particularly water conditions and where you are on the trail. And we'll be glad to include you in our update. A couple of folks that have gotten off since my last update, Syrup and Airbag, they got off due to COVID. Uh, they got COVID, but they plan to get back on. Trekker and Julio are off due to blood clots in Rick's leg. So Rick is a multiple myeloma cancer survivor. Uh, and the chemo treatments that he takes, uh, that he currently takes, and I, that's a medicine he takes, but still a chemical he's introducing into his body, that he takes for his cancer is uh makes him prone to blood clots well they made it all the way to bennington vermont and he got a blood clot in his leg and so they decided that the it wasn't going away and the best thing for them to do would be to get off for health reasons so that is quite an accomplishment for a uh, somebody that's undergoing cancer treatments right now and, uh, to make it all the way up to vermont so congratulations to them and look forward to what life has for you in front of you since your cancer treatments are working and you've got your whole life in front of you. Gaia is off. She started at Harper's Ferry on her flip-flop and made it to Bennington, Vermont, and got off just due to exhaustion uh, and just tired and just not enjoy enjoying the trail anymore. And that uh, is something that occurs on a regular basis, and that's okay. So that's still quite an accomplishment to make it from Harper's Ferry into Vermont. So congratulations to her. And then Funky Town is off. She has made it all the way on her Nobo from Springer all the way up uh, to the main state line. And then after the Whites, she just got off because her knees were just shot. And it just wasn't happening for her anymore, and that's okay too. So, uh, But again, that's quite an accomplishment to make it all the way up there uh, to New Hampshire. Congratulations to her. If you are out there hiking and you decide to end your hike for whatever reason, be it injury or it just ain't happening anymore for you, that is perfectly okay. But please let us know, when, particularly if you're on social media and you're somebody that's been reporting through this channel, because we worry about you when we don't hear from you. From a, a, for a, a great length of time. So we want to know what's happening with you and how things are going. And so just give us a heads up and let us know you're off trail. No problem with that whatsoever. So we had some summits from the last time I reported. Bricks uh, summited, and Bricks is somebody who has been reporting to us on a regular basis, hiked with his hiking partner, Gazelle, for most of the time that he's been updating us. And he also summited with KT and Grandmaster. Uh, his summit number was number 89. So uh, that was a uh, that was a couple like I don't know maybe ten days ago, maybe a little more, maybe two weeks ago that he summited, uh, but he was summit number eighty nine, and he started down at Springer on February twenty six, and his Nobo tag was five oh nine, uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of where the bubble is, where people started in February, the end of February where they are on the trail. And so those folks that started in March, uh, mid-March, whenever you started there, of course, a little further behind. But those are the folks that are coming up in Vermont and New Hampshire right now. Croczilla, he summoned it on July 17th. And Boston, Chatterbox, and Straps, another folks that had been uh, updating us on a regular basis, they have summited. So congratulations to all those folks that summited. 
if you summit and you want to be on the channel here and let us celebrate with you and honor you and your accomplishment, then please uh, send us your notice that you summited, uh, send us your summit picks, and send us also what your number was, what the your summit pass number was up there. That kind of gives us an idea of you know, where we are in the process of folks that have been summited. So congratulations to all those folks. Look forward to some other folks that will be summited here uh, in the next uh, probably three to six weeks, I expect. Some news that we got going on out there on the trail. So there has been an aggressive bear in the Jared Gap, Georgia region. So that Jared Gap is right before uh, the Blood Mountain Wilderness. That's kind of the gateway to the Blood Mountain Wilderness. And from Jared Gap to Neal's Gap, or Neil Gap, you are required to carry a bear canister if you camp overnight in there uh, between March 1st and June 1st. And that's for the very reason that this that happened, and that's because they had an aggressive bear in there. So uh, aggressive bear meaning uh, one that comes after uh, your um, your comes after food supplies or gets or and and gets around humans and will not back down when humans are trying to get him out of the way. So uh so that can be a pretty dangerous situation. So folks going through there, just remember that you do have to have a bear canister when you're going through there. If only if you're going to be spending the night there from Jared Gap uh, up there to Blood Mountain Shelter. And there's another shelter in between there and then to Neil Gap. There's a new reroute that is, if it's not open right now, uh, will be open soon. And that is a reroute there at Stratton Pond. So they are moving the trail uh, up the hill uh, into the woods more so that it does not follow the Stratton Pond shoreline. Uh, currently, it follows the shoreline, but it will be moved back away from that. They are trying to basically rehab the entire shoreline of Stratton Pond to get it back to its natural state. And there's a lot of places there around the shoreline that are wore out from hikers and stuff. And so they're wanting to get, make it back natural again and, and that's when i say they that's the green mountain club that looks after that section of the trail up through there so uh if you haven't if you go through there let me know if it's rerouted i was up there two weeks ago and and the caretaker there uh for the stratton pond shelter in the stratton pond area her name was a book bag and she indicated in two weeks from then they were going to be rerouting it so by now it should be be interesting to know if the, if that did follow through uh, like she was indicating. And then Whispers, who is our northern correspondent, he ran into a pass-through hiker that may be reopening the old Rattle River hostel that's up in Shelburne, New Hampshire in 2023. So that's not for certain, but stay tuned. Hopefully that will be something that's happened because there there is a a void in, in those areas up there of, uh, of, of hostels. Uh, and folks to uh, to go to the get off trail, and then I uh, had a viewer send me in a uh, article that was uh, from Jennifer Farr Davis, and she is kind of helping uh, give some publicity and working on getting some resources together for a newish trail that's called the Appalachian High Route. High Route. And the Appalachian High Route is a 330 mile loop trail that combines the Appalachian Trail. Uh, the Mountains to the Sea Trail and the Burnsville Connector there. And the Burnsville Connector was kind of the last piece of the puzzle to put that together to make that into a loop trail. So it uh, it, it provides access to, to nearly all of the 6,000 plus peaks that are in the Appalachians. Uh, and along the way, it goes through three national parks, three national forests, and one state park. So some of it's on National Forest Service Road, uh, some of it's on Backcountry Road. So it does have a little bit of road walking to it, but it is still a really good precursor to the Appalachian Trail through hike. So if you're somebody that's going to be through hiking in 2023 and in other years, that might be a good trail for you to go out and check out your equipment and just see if that indeed, those kind of uh, climbs and descents is something that's going to do you well for on your through hike. And then Pilgrim, who's from Matthews, North Carolina, he sent in a bit of in info that he came across on a section hike up there. And he indicates that up there at the Mount Rogers uh, headquarters, you can call for a shuttle uh, that will shuttle you in to the Marion, Virginia Walmart for free. And that is the Lynx Transit Shuttle Bus. So I don't have any information for that. I'll look for that, try to get that back out to you. 
Uh, but I had not heard of that before, and that is a place, you know, people there at the partnership shelter, they will call in pizza, but now you can go and get it yourself, or you can go to Walmart and get it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Clingman's Dawn is in the process of possibly being uh, renamed or having its name restored back to its original name, and that was uh, named by the Cherokee Indian Nation of Kuwahi. I probably didn't pronounce that right, but I don't have much Cherokee in me, only like a 16th, so... But Kuwahi means mulberry place, and that was an important place for the Cherokee tribe before it was taken over uh, by the National Park Service. Um, and uh, they have petitioned the National Park Service to restore that name to it. Uh, the original Clingman's Dome was named after Thomas Klingsman, uh, who was a North Carolina uh, senator uh, or senator for, you know, for the U.S. government from North Carolina. And so uh, they named it after him for whatever reason. And so the Cherokee Nation would, was trying to get it renamed back uh, into its original name. And the National Park Service in recent years has kind of been open to some of these uh, historic landmarks that are under their purview being renamed and returned back to their historic name. So that'll be interesting to see if that happens. And then uh, Bunny, the mother of Alex Druke, who was a through hiker in 2020, and then went over to fight uh, the Russians uh, in the war against Ukraine, uh, in Ukraine. He and he was captured, but he's he's one of us. He's one of our. He's one of the hiker community, and so I had mentioned him a couple weeks ago. And uh, Bunny just wanted to thank all the hikers for their thoughts and prayers. Uh, remind them to contact their senators and representatives, asking uh, for you know whatever their senators can do to get him returned right now he is a pow and uh, typically pows particularly those who are uh foreign foreigners from uh the, you know that are fighting for ukraine the russians have considered those mercenaries and they have given them the death sentence and as you know uh, or you may not know but if you follow the news at all russians just killed a bunch of pows over there by bombing a camp a pow a detention center and so um Things are not going great in that, and so we want to continue to pray for Alex uh, and also another person, uh, Andy, that were over there fighting, and I believe they were fighting with Alex. And so uh, Bunny sends along her appreciation for everything that, uh, that you hikers have done, and hopefully we'll continue to do that. Folks, I, as always, I appreciate everything you've done. Thanks again for retrading Kathy up there in New York. Looking forward to seeing you all again in the very near future. Uh, I've got my videos coming out for that section, so they'll be coming out in the next uh, next week or so. As soon as I have time to put all that together, got a lot of stuff to share with you, and I'm excited to do that. And then I'm also excited to get back on the trail, plan to get back on the trail sometime uh, the end of August, August and uh continue there from Parisburg where I got off before my Vermont trip and continue north from there. Folks, that's all I got this week. As always, appreciate you and we'll see you out there.